yes. We'll rap. <laughs> Listening to some rap. Actually, I need that. Uh, here. That. Uh, oh, oh, we're trying some uh, Phoenix right here. Alright. Let's go. Hopefully, this is easier than. Uh, then hey what easier than the game we played last time <laughs> episode one the first turn about dude I love this game I <laughs> I played it before on the DS that was a long time ago dude yeah <sighs> The only thing that's better in the old game, I mean the other game, the 999, is that there's voice acting. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught, not like this. We gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3, 9.47 a.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 2. Wow, look at the visuals, dude. Looks so much better now. Boy, am I nervous. I wonder if they took, like, the original visuals. And then... They just, you know, pasted it here. Or they redid everything. Right! Oh, hiya, Chief. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. That's a lot about you, and your client as well. Thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh... I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick. You gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Mm, the person responsible for her girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's a story. The first case is a fairly simple one. He just called a murder simple. Holy crap. <laughs> a young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy that arrested her wa arrested was... Uh, the guy that they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. Okay, hello showers, hello boy, hello Jared. <laughs> but I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. That's just what I'm going to do. 
Wait, I'm gonna do this for a second. August 3, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Wright? This is your first trial, is it not? I yes, Your Honor. I am, um, a little nervous. My conduct during the trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope he can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. And <laughs> shaking, eyesight, fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Are you but? Wait, defendant, right? Wait, defendant. <laughs> I I am the defendant. Wait, what? What's a defendant again? <laughs> Dude, I am. There you go. <laughs> I am. I am correct. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No. No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank in here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim? Oh, of course I know the victim's name. I'm, um, just forgot temporarily. <laughs> I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Let's press. Okay. The victim's name is Cindy. Okay. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cinder block. <laughs> Cindy Stone. The victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. I remember this. <laughs> she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem such. You seem much more relaxed, Miss Wright. Good for you. I see Kyle. Sad way to die. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Will you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker was found lying on the floor. I remember this was a clock. Not a statue. It's a clock. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Dude, I remember playing this and I was like... <laughs> Damn, I can be a lawyer. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. <laughs> okay. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Hmm. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! 
They were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, and they all die. <laughs> I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumb. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies. All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Uh-oh. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. You clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Let's stop him. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Oh damn. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? Cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. And when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Uh oh. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is to clear to everyone. It's clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not so. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did. And maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly, dude. I know, I sent him a signal. Tell the truth. Or, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. <laughs> Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? Prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. This guy. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Here we go. <laughs> I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead. I coiled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. 
However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to our nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. It was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Hmm. Okay. Now, oh, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Uh, cross-examination, your honor. Alright, right. This is it. The, ra the real deal. The right deal. <laughs> uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? The client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open a court record with- okay. And point out the contradictions in the testimony. Let's see. Detective time! Time of death. Wait, the time of death is 4 to 5 p.m. He called at 1. Okay. Statue in the th shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. The victim apparently uh, 7.30 day before. Okay. Uh, let's go back. He said 1 p.m. Let's present this. Present. You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I found that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to her, no body, to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh yeah. Oh, that. Oh, er. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh. Well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. It's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Ah, uh, yeah. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? We go again. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying time. It's probably coming from the television. How is there a television if it was a blackout? <laughs> but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a f video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. 
terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. I heard a voice saying the time on a pa tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Alright. See, when I found a body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It's probably coming from the television. Bruh. <laughs> Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Yeah. I, well, arc. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Don't dress guys with moles on their head. <laughs> Mr. Sawit. Court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, your honor. It, er, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Okay, hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the Wow. How do you even change your testimony like that? And they're like, okay. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. But... Being the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Okay. could present this statue but I don't know if that's how wait wait this one Wait, let's let's present this one. I don't know if this works. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. If you get caught lying in court you will be sent to prison. <laughs> hey, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may, yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. It doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apology. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Huh? I... <laughs> Uh, well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Have any problems with this testimony now? I don't think so. I guess not. There was a clock on the scene, so no problem. Right, are you out of your mind? Oh, okay. The witness couldn't have possibly known it was a clock just by seeing it. He said himself. 
never entered the apartment. It was in his testimony. Hey, you're right. Something the matter? Did the defense have anything to add? Yes, yes I do. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Let the witness testify that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it, prove it, prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sowert, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. Oh, God. Ah, bots. Ah. <laughs> That's why you were so certain about the time. Bots in the chat! Ah! Wait, 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 wait. Gotta... Can I do this here? Um... How do I do this here? There's god dick. There's goddamn bots in the chat. Delete it. Okay, that works. <laughs> I don't know. This is all baseless conjecture. What the f I was being... Baseless. Let's look at the witness face. <sighs> Gah! Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with a clock? I, I, that day. I never... Look, I, the clock. I heard no. I mean, I saw. Duh, yeah! <laughs> that timing. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, your honor, you claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think through it carefully. Your honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. The sound the clock now here in this court. Your honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, you've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 1125. Ack! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! 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 You forgot one thing! Uh oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow. Proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? You can't prove that you don't have a case. Hmm, he's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, your honor. Which means I cannot let you indict the witness. Fortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sauer. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happened. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! 
You lawyers are all slime. Grr, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Did we fail? Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chief. Listen up, Bright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you know, you have your proof. Right. Right, right? I think I know, because he... She was in another... She was in another country, right? Hey, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find, and l find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright? Say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course, there is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond the, the doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. See this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. So yeah, he was in. She was in another country. So I think yeah, this one. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. We all know the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. It's four p.m. there. It's one a.m. the next day there. Clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. The thing is though, why would she bring that <laughs> why would she bring that awful clock? <laughs> why does she why does she need to bring that <laughs> huge ass statue clock? Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit, or should I say, Mr. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> oh shoot, he died. <laughs> order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, er. Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Ooh, I like how there's confetti. And with that, this court is adjourned. Elliot, I can be a lawyer now. <laughs> Turns out Frank Sawit was a common burglar. Posted as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3, 2.32pm. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. She's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. 
Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Go, wait, no, I mean bad. Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Ah, uh, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent. <laughs> Thanks. Harry we owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner. Movie. My treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, but hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... <laughs> he came in the murder weapon, what the... Actually, I made this clock for... Oh, wow. I made one for... and one for me. Really? You... you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... He was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just wanna cry? Larry... Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Uh, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him. Huh? Oh, yeah. Right. What the heck is she talking about? Yeah, what the heck is she talking about? What the hell is she talking about? The statue? I mean, she brought the statue, I guess. I guess... Oh shoot! No, 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 no! <laughs> eh? <laughs> it's okay, Nick. Don't worry about it. I'll forget about this soon enough. Look, I'm gonna head home. <laughs> Whoops! I pressed the wrong button, right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. You never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we do, we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Uh, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, how about dinner? On me? I'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Speaking of Harry. You're saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, uh, yeah. Does Phoenix get... Mia? Noise, what a chad. Oh no, about that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> er, uh, yeah, part at least. About that. <laughs> you have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? About that. <laughs> and so my first trial came to a close. He dies? What the fuck? That's so anime. I didn't say anything, man. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Spoiler. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Thanks for watching. Chapter 2. Brand new episode. Wait, how many episodes are there? Yes, please. Heck yeah. Alright. Ring. Ring. Hello, this is Maya. 
Hey Maya, it's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How you been? Well, lonely. And it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. You've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. Good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. A lot of buzz about the coming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue of the thinker and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Ah, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? Not working? That's lame. I had to take uh, the clockwork out. Sorry. Put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm, well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9 o'clock, to pick it up? Be in a pre trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like. Burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis. So see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Conversation recorded. September 5. September 5, 8.57. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you're a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Oh, you are not con cogniferous of my background? Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Oh, ho. My dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry, but I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. <laughs> Beds. Don't trust guys with pink suits. Holy crap. Red, white, blue. He did. He did. <laughs> uh oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. Didn't know she was gonna die that fast. But how? No, she was hot. <laughs> What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. I smell blood. That can't be good. I have to check and see. That smell. Blood! Sob. Please. Someone's there. I'm not gonna lie, Maya was my one of my childhood anime crush. <laughs> Maya's so cute. <laughs> chief, chief, chief. I don't blame you. Hello, Maya. Who are you? A strange girl dropped out cold and left her lying on the office sofa. Oi, what the fuck? Call 911. <laughs> she has an ability, too. <laughs> I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. She has an ability. Just you wait. <laughs> Just kidding. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly, it began to fade. 
Until finally she was called. No, Chief. Why would I? Dude, this is evidence. Chief, it's hard seeing it. What the fuck? Linker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Call 911. <laughs> Piece of paper. It's have fallen out of Mia's hand. Maya. A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from the department store. Dated yesterday. Steve added to the court record. I think that's enough snooping around for now. And then we meet the damn detective. Find out what that girl was doing. Let's get out of here, man! Let's get out of here. The girl's just now. Where'd she go? Put her right there on that sofa. Uh oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um. Excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya Fay. Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. Never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the court. Before Mia died, she wrote the message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name. Why? Why would she write my name? Please just calm down. Why would sis write my name? Uh oh. I've done it. I'd better hurry up and call the police. It's time to call the police! Um. How do I call the police? Oh, there you go. Call the police! Call the police! Please, please, come quick! What, what was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? Oh my god! <laughs> this is this chick? Why are they all wearing pink suits? I hate it! It's holding a phone in her hand. Call the police! Alright. Okay, let's move out. Wee -woo, wee -woo. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Oh my god. Dude, the detective! I actually really like the detective. Is this boy? <laughs> Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe, what an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying there was some murder. <laughs> Must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you to move... Of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me! This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What?! The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. K killer I'm not... Case closed! You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am! Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. She was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. 
I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Her own sister. Arrested. <laughs> Justice system is, <laughs> is broken. Oh. It's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. You look so tired. Um. Are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I mean... It's up to you. I better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes, I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office. He looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought... It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ah, so he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Ah, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. And I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. What do we do? Something I've been wanting to ask you. Yeah? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what they, what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium in training. A, a spirit medium? Pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Day of the crime. Did you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted to wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember. You want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. Pretty sure our conversation is on myself. You recorded it. Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. Alright. You say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Alright, of course. This time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. You're an acolyte, uh, or medium in training. That's right, the Fay family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fay family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class, too. I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium. With ESP and all that. Yes, in training. Now can't you contact me as spirit then? You can't just ask her who killed her. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm, I thought that would be too easy. Um, something to matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you for a favor? 
This is the address of the famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And well, I'm in trouble. You think you could go ask him to represent me? Sure. Sure, why not? I'll go ask him. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Oh my god, is that Edgeworth? It's, it's my boy Edgeworth! <laughs> Ouch. Say, what about your parents? I... I see. Don't worry. Leave it to me. Damn. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? Tell me if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney attorney to defend me. No, that happened. They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. The visiting hours are almost up. I better hurry. Alright, I'll be back. Okay. Grossberg? Wait, what? It's not? It's not Edgeworth? What? Maybe we should get more evidence in, uh, in the office, dude. Oh, I like how there's a check on what you checked. Nice. Alright, I think we checked everything. Go back to the office? Office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that bus guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. Could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That bus guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... Detective Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. Don't go calling me Dick. <laughs> hey, Dick, get over here. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Be right there. I love this dude. <laughs> he may be annoying at first, but he's a he's a, he's a good dude. <laughs> uh, ahem. You're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. Okay, we gotta check for more... more evidence. Sky is blue and so am I. Okay, uh, let's just go back, I guess. Oops, not here. Hey, what is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm. Better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Wait, but she's not there. You there now? I examined everything here, so... Go back and talk to the guy, I guess. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Hmm, you wanna know the results, eh? Now don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. You might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright, you can see the report, but that's all. Death was instantaneous. Dude, how- how hard is that damn clock? Holy crap. 
made it like a brick. Clary made it like a brick. <laughs> I'm about my... I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? The city's put pr prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of, of, of course I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain, he doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, uh, don't talk about him like that way. You make him sound barely- You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth isn't on this one. Is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at an incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of Black Alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an, an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Okay. There was a broken glass at the crime scene, right? Hmm, all that? Seems like a glass stand next to the victim fell over. The glass shards were pieces of the broken stand. I'm wondering, do you know anything about this? Okay. Go back, I guess? I don't know. Oh, the day of the crime. Did you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. Kinda gotten used to it. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that ra Larry made. Practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? Right around 9 o'clock. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear from her. Your family. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. I don't know. So she could still be alive? Your mother. The women in my family have been mediums for generations. Say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man and he, he, he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer and she left the mountain. So you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become an independent or I would lose my power. Too bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. Your mother's enemy. So who was this man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir, everyone was talking about it apparently. The police were running out of leads and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? <laughs> Police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved, we thought. We thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. Police consultation with a medium had all been carried out in secret, of course, but the man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud and that media jumped on it big time. My mother became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me, White? That was his name, my sister told me. White. Hmm. Go back to this one? Nothing still? What the hell? Percent evidence, I guess? I wanted to ask you about the murder, but of course this. Better not ask. 
was lying next to the chief's body. I saw that too. Remember that receipt? You mean the one with my name on it? Any idea why she... Absolutely none. Um, do you trust me? I trust you. I trust you. Why? Don't you think I did it too? No, I don't. Just a hunch, but... The detective thinks I did it. Don't shoot, took it. Oh, right, the... The phone. Shoot. Wait. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Uh... Move to the... yeah. There you go. I was wondering, did you see my face cell phone? Oh, I have, oh that? I have that. You think it, I could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Oh, he's onto me. Tell him straight. I tell him why I want it. There's no way he'll give it to me. Something the matter? Oh no, it's just, you know, detective. Oh, I know nothing, pal. Cell phone has a lot of numbers in it, like her boyfriend. Cell phone holds all the little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Are you trying to confuse me? Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Ah, oh, here. You can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there after all. He didn't notice this recorded conversation. Nice. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. Oh, it's this girl. Miss April May, wow. <laughs> God damn it. These names. Okay. Go back to attention. Use your cell phone. Okay, what? Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say. Can I listen to my sister's voice? Nice squash. Thank you. Oh, that's it? Okay. Uh. Oh, okay. Yes. Go here. Oh, I need someone crying. <laughs> oh, hello there, handsome. Yeah. Hi, smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to the lawyer, pal. Hee <laughs> hee. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Ooh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewit. OMG is Yanners. Yo, what the hell this? She was in it. Oh my god. She did the she did the phone thing. What are you doing? No touching. Oh, bad boy. Really shouldn't fry around in other people's rooms now. I like how we're a lawyer, but we're also playing detective. Alright, I'm just gonna skip through these because... My throat is dying. <laughs> I 
are you hitting on me? Okay, bye! think any of this will do anything so goodbye I don't care bye bye hmm seems like mr. Grossberg is up well maybe I should just wait here for him um that was a no <laughs> oh my god aha so you're the one they say has been looking for me yes that's me <laughs> hmm that badge on your collar? I so you're a lawyer, are you now? <laughs> Why is Mia dead? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. Yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy, then how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm, something the matter? Bro ZD voice, right? <laughs> You came to see the one and only Marvin Grosberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Oh, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Faye. Uh-oh. He's in on it! Ah, yes. Maya Faye. And go on. What a strange reaction. Ha-cha-cha! I am really quite busy here, sir. You just said you weren't busy. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How do you know the trial was tomorrow? Oh, uh, ahem. Anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me even birth. Please, what do I tell Maya? He's being paid, dude. Someone's gonna kill him if he takes the case. <laughs> I think not, I said. Terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular. I cannot say. Okay. Um, go back to Maya. I'll do it. Defend. What if we just go home? I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me or not. Why? Why? Well... Someone else is the culprit. I don't know why. You aren't the culprit. Someone else is. How do you know? I am... I have a hunch. Why would she kill her own sister, dude? You might just go home, bro. <laughs> Aww. Freaking shonen protagonist. Aw, yeah. Hi, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. So kind of you. <laughs> well, that's 
Let's fight this one and you get you out of here. Right, thank you. It's a screwdriver. All right. Uh, let's go. Do we just go back? Oh, she's gone. Oh. Bellboy. He's in on it. Mr. <gasps> Mr. White. Ah. Ah. Let's take that screwdriver out. A wiretap. Hmm. Oh, good thing we got it, dude. What about the screwdriver? Uh oh, let's get out of here. I'll see you in court. <laughs> to be continued. Can Phoenix just become Batman? <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm gonna end here. Uh, I wanted to show M Maya's Maya skill. <laughs> All right. I think I'll end here. Yeah, it's not- Oh, it's Edgeworth, my boy! Alright, I'm gonna end here for now. Uh, yeah. Save. Oh, I'm glad you can save anyway. Cause my throat is dying, boy. Oh. Alright. I guess that's it for this stream. What skill? <laughs> I could show you right now if you want. <laughs> she has a skill, which is, yeah. <laughs> I could show you. <laughs> Did I miss it? No, you didn't miss it. <laughs> it's not yet there. <laughs> I could show you. Do you want to see my skill? <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know when I'm streaming this game again, so I might as well. Maya Phoenix, right? Oh, Phoenix, right? Channel. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Wait, what? Show. Wait, who is this? I don't know who that is. What? Who? Oh my god, okay. We can... Let's see. Yeah, it's after this. It's after the case. I know it's after the case. Nani? Oh, th this one? <laughs> Where is it? Actually, I don't know when it starts. <laughs> when does it start? Where is it? I need to see her skill. <laughs> oh, there it is, there it is. 
Her skill. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It was there. It was there already. Oh! <laughs> Her skill. Since she since she's a spirit medium, right? <laughs> Is Mia? <gasps> <laughs> Skill. <laughs> ara ara. <laughs> Maya went ara ara. <laughs> I am Maya, but I am also Mia. <laughs> Skill. <laughs> Bro, you don't even need the rule 34 anymore. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Powers! When did she get hot? <laughs> Cause she's a spirit medium, right? So she channeled Mia, Mia's spirit. Then they got the, <laughs> for some reason she also got the physical appearance. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's Maya's skill. <laughs> she can channel her sister. <laughs> Can she stay like this? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, well, I think I'm done for this stream. <laughs> I like this skill. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the men in the courtroom are basically Twitch stuff. <laughs> Both older and younger sister. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> God damn it! All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, yeah. I think I'm just gonna end it now. Bye bye. Thanks for watching, dude. There was another viewer earlier, but I don't know who. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Alright, bye-bye.